Innovation and collaboration is key to the creation and also implementation of sustainable solutions in all sectors of society. Just think, for instance, of how many times a day you take out cart cartons of food or drink from your refrigerator. So the food and packaging industry is an important sector in this transition to a healthier and safer planet. And I'm going to look into how Tetra Pak addresses the, the challenges when it comes to innovation and sustainability. With me here in the studio, I have Lawrence Mott from Lausanne. Hi there, Lawrence. Nice to see you. Uh, Lawrence Mott is, uh, is Vice President of Development and Engineering. And we will talk today about how Tetra Pak is cracking open problems to create new solutions when it comes to sustainability. So Lawrence, let's start by looking into the major challenges from your point of view that the industry is facing. Thank you, Katrina. Um, I th think many of us will be familiar with the types of challenges that uh, the industry is facing. Probably first and foremost, it's climate impact, like many industries, as having a major impact on how we are thinking about our future and how we run our operations today. Um, there's also food availability, of course, because the population is still growing and we have a job to do to make sure we can deliver food safe and available everywhere. So that's a huge challenge for us. <clears throat> and on top of that, we have the issue of uh, sustainability, of course. Making our packages 100% renewable, 100% recyclable, and fitting to a low carbon circular economy is an enormous challenge. It's a transformational challenge for the uh, packaging industry, I would say. So what role would you say that innovation plays in this? Oh, innovation is absolutely fundamental. You know, this company is 70 years old. Every product that we've put on the market, all of these fantastic advantages we've been able to deliver and value for our customers, our consumers, has come through uh, you know, a healthy um, approach to innovation in Tetra Pak. And it, it's equally important now. You know, we have an enormous job to do ahead of us to attract the right talent, to develop the right products, to be able to make sure in the future that we can deliver packages that are 100% uh, renewable, 100% sustainable, 100% um, recyclable, fitting to the low carbon circular economy, and at the same time, delivering food safety and serving this uh, growing population. These are some fantastic challenges that sit in front of us when it comes to innovation. So, Lawrence, you mentioned the value chain. How do you, in Tetra Pak, work to drive innovation in collaboration with others? Well, um, Ruben Rousing, who founded our company, was uh, very clear. Um, he left us with a very nice phrase, which is, a package should save more than it costs. And um, it rings truer today, perhaps, than it has done ever. Um, not that we should just be saving the product that is within the package, that we should be ensuring that the package that we produce has the absolute minimal impact on our environment, of course. Uh, we've been pretty good at this to date. You know, most of our packaging uh, contains renewable resources, but that's a huge challenge for us in the future, of course, to make sure that our, the materials that we produce, the filling machines that we sell to our customers and the processing equipment for actually making the juice or the milk or whatever the product might be, can fit to a low carbon circular economy. These are huge challenges, um, but we do this understanding that the package should save more than it costs. And it's a little bit of our guiding light, if you like, through this uh, innovation journey that we're faced with. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, and when you look at innovation from your perspective, what gaps do you see? What are you lacking in terms of innovation? Well, um, I, I think there's a number of things in our industry um, where we have challenges. Um, packaging is completely ubiquitous, of course, and uh, makes use of um, rather commoditized materials. What we have to do as an industry and as a company is turn to some of the latest uh, technologies 
to be able to provide different types of packaging for different types of products to provide barriers for materials so you can protect food so you can keep it safe right the way through the value chain and developing these type of technologies requires completely new capabilities new skills new competencies in engineers and management and whatever it might be but it also requires that we work in a different way now the old notion of a linear supply chain is gone we need to work in an ecosystem we need to work in very very close partnerships with our development partners who also are our suppliers and at the same time we need to work in very close collaboration with our customers so we can make sure that the products that we produce which are sustainable are also food safe at scale and right the way through the value chain and that we actually provide this need for the future consumers it's a very very big challenge to do it simultaneously. Nowadays, we, we see a lot of interest and push from the consumers when it comes to sustainable solutions, also in, in the packaging sector. How does that affect your innovation strategies or your, your, your work with innovation? Uh, to be quite frank, I think it's a fantastic opportunity that consumers are so interested in sustainable products. Um, Tetra Pak um, was founded on the premise that our packaging material is um, largely renewable in nature. After all, it's made from wood fibres, uh, a considerable proportion of it. And now we have this fantastic opportunity to innovate further, provide something which is 100% renewable, 100% recyclable and fits to this low carbon economy. And now our consumers are actively pulling for this so principally what it's doing for us it's it's saying wow all this investment that you've made over these previous decades to invest in these technologies to invest in this know-how to invest in this knowledge give that to us please in the form of products so it's creating a huge pull through the value chain and i would say is actually driving a really a complete transformation of the packaging industry it's very exciting Let's, let's dig a little bit deeper uh, on the topic of collaboration and also in the light of this, what we just addressed, the, the consumer uh, interest for, for, for sustainable products. Um, we have the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDG 12, Responsible Consumption and Production. How do you, how do you address these topics uh, with your colleagues in the innovation process, all the way from the supply chain and up into the finished product? Yeah, that, 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 that is a good question. You know, the, the, um, the trick with sustainability is not just to produce a small number of packages. You, you have to produce these at scale. It's relatively easy to make prototypes. It's relatively easy to make a completely sustainable package, but you have to make it safe. And if you can't make it at scale, you can't minimize food waste and you can't serve, you know, a, a global population, which we do and which we need to continue to do. In order to bring those three things together, really, it takes a very strong collaboration. It starts with us typically in academia and we invest in technical know-how. We invest in capability and competence building a long time ahead of the actual need or the challenge or the problem that we're facing. So we've been investing in this know-how and this capability to develop a sustainable package now for over a decade, in fact. Is what's giving us perhaps our advantage now that we can develop the material, the filling equipment, the processing equipment and the distribution systems simultaneously. Of course, as we move through the development process, we need to collaborate by bringing on board more and more partners. We call this kind of a development ecosystem. And we've done that together with our traditional supply chain, but also bringing in startup companies who've helped us with some fantastically innovative ideas. Also having uh, a very strong dialogue, very close dialogue right through this process with our customers and the brands. They're the ones who ultimately serve this to the consumers. So they have to sit very, very close to us right through this development activity. But there really is a very long lead time of competence and capability development, uh, which is required in order to deliver the final product. 
When it comes to skills and what kind of people you need in this process to create all these fantastic products, more sustainable products, do you have the right skills at hand or what do you need? You know, many people might be surprised by the type of skill sets that are required in the packaging industry. Uh, we are a system provider. We produce uh, the packaging material. We produce the processing equipment that actually makes the juice or the milk or the whatever the customer's product might be. And we provide the machinery for making, making the packages themselves. We need a huge range of engineering and science skills from mechanical engineers to automation engineers to microbiologists to regulatory specialists and so on. Finding these skills is a huge challenge today. It's a very competitive marketplace to get this. Um, in the past, it's not always been the packaging industry in recent years, but it's been the most attractive. But we really think it's a fantastic place to work now. There is a brilliant opportunity to change the planet to make a big difference in terms of delivering sustainable products. And sustainability in our company means not just the products, but also, you know, attacking some of the other sustainable development goals. So, for example, uh, diversity, you know, in our industry, um, certainly in Tetra Pak, you know, our head of automation and development is a woman. Our head of program management is a woman. The head of systems engineering for the company is a woman. The head of materials and package is a woman. So we bringing diversity and this diversity in thinking to the workplace is just as challenging as bringing the right skill sets. I think we're doing rather well at that at the moment. If we look further ahead, five to 10 years, where will innovation be in the food and packaging industry? Um, you know, um, Tetra Pak invests more than a, a billion euros every three years in R&D in packaging alone. Um, we think that we are uniquely positioned as a system supplier, not just supplying the materials, but also the processing equipment and the packaging machines. We think we are uniquely positioned to really drive a transformation in our industry towards a, a package which is 100% renewable, 100% recyclable, and fits to this low carbon economy. And I think we will see that now. We will see that emerging, not over the next 10 years, not over even the next five years, but uh, uh, relatively soon. And then of course, as with all new breakthroughs and fantastic new uh, products, then there will be a, a stepwise evolution of the performance over time. I'd like to ask you to finish off with a call to action to the rest of the food and packaging industry. How would you phrase a call to action? I think it would be very simple. And I think that is that um, all of us have to work together. We have to be able to be able to collaborate much better than we do today to deliver a product for a sustainable tomorrow. That's great news. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lawrence Mott, for sharing your insights about how Tetra Pak works with innovation and sustainability. I'm sure that there are many more than I that will look at the package when you take it out from your refrigerator with a little bit more respect and as always, of course, recycle it. <laughs>